Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Tracy, one of the ministers here at Faith Center Healing School. And we got some good stuff for you today. I don't know what it is, I just know it's going to be good stuff. <laughs> um, first of all, please make sure that your phones are silenced. Silenced means silence, not quiet. <laughs> I had to say that. Amen. Uh, Truth. Um, and when you come in those doors, it doesn't look like we have anyone new. So, of course, you know, register at the beginning of the year. So next year, you're going to register again. And then sign your name in every week, please. Um, we would appreciate it if you were your name tags. I know maybe I should know everybody's name by now, and maybe I do, but maybe I don't either. So, your name tags. Uh, if you have a testimony, which we like testimony, even if it's a little testimony, there is no little testimony. Fill out this card, hand it in to one of us, and we'll call you up the following week to give your testimony. Okay, remember, there's no little testimony. I love all testimonies. Um, and back on that table where you sign in each week, we have Pastor Evelyn's book, The Great Physician, still on call for $15. If you'd like to purchase, just talk to Loretta. Or Pat, it's back there, I think we're at it. And then Pastor Pam's book, Out of the Wilderness, Into the Promise, $13. And then on the table against the wall, we have lots of goodies. We have um, CDs, we have all kinds of stuff back there. There's, sometimes there's magazines, sometimes there's little books, sometimes there's little trinkets. Um, but this one here is Gloria Copeland, Healing Confessions, and then we have The Power of the Tongue by Kenneth Copeland. Of course, you know, we always, The Power of the Tongue, I mean, I think that is one of the main things. If we can get that under control, or at least somewhat, that's when we see changes. Um, I grabbed a few of the, there's lots and lots of flyers back there. Um, this one here, it says, Sickness is a Curse, and it gives scripture on describing how sickness is a curse. And we know that in Galatians 3.13, it says we, that Jesus became a curse for us. That means we no longer should carry the curse because Jesus carried it out of here for us. And if sickness is a curse, well, we should not have that, right? Um, so then once we get that revelation and are delivered of sickness, here's how to keep your healing. Um, it's confessions, and you know what? It is a confession, but it, it is also um, using our authority. So I just kind of feel prompted to say, let's 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 speak this over ourselves right now, okay? So just repeat after me: In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I exercise authority. Authority. Over this body of mine. Over this body of mine. Sickness and disease. Sickness and disease. I refuse to allow you to stay. I refuse to allow you to stay. This body. This body. This house. This house. Belongs to God. Belongs to God. It is the temple of God. It is the temple of God. Sickness, sickness. You have no right. You have no right to trespass on God's property. To trespass on God's property. Now you get out. Now you get out. You leave my body. You leave my body. I have authority over you. I have authority over you. I know it. I know it. You know it. You know it. And God knows it. And God knows it. I hold fast to what I have. I hold fast to what I have. And I am keeping my healing in Jesus' name. I am keeping my healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So now you should walk out of here differently than you walked in. Amen. You walked in with any sickness. Amen. Because you just used your authority in Jesus' name. Okay. Um, so we now have um, Facebook back, for those of you who do not know, Rockford Faith Center Healing School. And you have to ask to join. Okay, and then you can see all of the teachings um, from way back from several years ago. You can see all of those teachings. Um, YouTube, Faith Center Healing School. 
If you subscribe, then you will get notifications when new videos are put up. So every Sunday, Monday-ish, probably Sunday, Pastor Pam puts up all the new videos, the teachings, the testimonies. And if you subscribe, you'll get a notification to that when they're up. Okay? Well, we get an invite to Facebook or just we were on it before. We should just get it. You're on it. Okay. Yeah, I okay. Think I am. Okay. And speaking of invite, you can invite others, yeah. you know, too. So, um, and then what do we have? Instant Instagram, Faith Center Healing School. Okay, so now we're on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Okay. Um, during worship, if you would like to sew into Healing School, the vessel it is back there, right? I know. Yeah. Okay. Back there by the sound booth. Just go ahead and grab an envelope in the back of the chair, and during worship, just walk back there, drop it in, and be blessed. So we'll go into worship. Yeah, we'll go into worship. There's something I'd like to say, and then we'll go into prayer, and then we'll go into the... Um, healing testimony video just because this is really was really pressed upon my heart this morning and um, I was reminded of it as I was sitting here um, this morning on the way here I <coughs> heard the song what a beautiful life and I can't sing it <laughs> but are you all familiar with the Christian song what a beautiful life I'm listening to that and I'm thinking and I started singing it, and, you know, and I'm feeling good. And, and then I remembered what's going on in the United States, let alone in the world, but in the United States. And I personally avoid watching all those videos of the floods and, and all that stuff. And, and then I heard some details yesterday that I really didn't want to hear. Um, I mean, I've been praying for everyone all along, and so... What I got from this song, what I felt like God impressed upon me is we are living a pretty normal life right now. And just next door, there are people who are not. Mm -hmm. right. their, their land, their territory was wiped out. Mm -hmm. Not to mention people. And what God impressed upon me is we need to be really, really grateful right now. And that's what came, kept coming to my mind is being grateful. And there's a lot in being grateful. Look up Bible verses on being grateful. There's so much power in being grateful. Um, but what also came to me is the, what we declared this morning over our body, having authority over our body. We not only have authority over our body. God didn't say, I give you authority. Jesus didn't say, I, I leave this authority to use my name over your body. He gave us the authority over the powers of the enemy. Um, my personal belief is anything that's wiping territory and people out, that's of the enemy. I mean, God, that's, that's my opinion. Um, so... What I was left with is, if we have authority over our body, I think this is what God was trying to tell me. Since we are living pretty normal right now, don't think that things can't come to our territory. We need to right now, before it comes, come against it. That's right. So um, I just encourage everyone to keep praying that no floods, no disasters, no earthquakes, Nothing can come upon my land, my territory. Um, really, I think that's the only way to protect it. So let's do that. And then since God gave me the word grateful, he kind of wanted me to focus on grateful today with this class. Study, the, study gratefulness in the Bible. And um, we really need to be grateful that nothing has happened here. Okay. So let's pray, and then we'll go into the healing testimony video. <coughs> Father, I just thank you. First of all, Father, I just thank you for sending your son Jesus to 
not only die on the cross to save us from sin and the penalty of sin and all sickness and disease and all curses, Father, he left authority yeah. to us to use his name. Sure. Father, he calmed the storm. If he can calm the storm with that spirit that was within him, we can cause the same thing. We can use the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and that calmed that storm to calm storms. So in the name of Jesus, Father, I use my authority in the name of Jesus Christ, the power and authority through his name. No storms can come upon any of our territories or our family's territory. It cannot come upon our land. No disasters, no harm. Father, we just use that authority in Jesus' name and we say we hold it back in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have that authority. We thank you that we can come to your throne boldly and ask anything that we want to ask, Father, and to know that you hear us. So, Father, I just thank you, and I pray your safety. Send your angels all around us, all around our homes, our territory. And, Father, just keep us safe. And I pray that you give us revelation. You give us um, guidance on any strategies that we are to use. But Father, I just thank you that you are a God who protects us. Yes. We are saved. We are healed. We are protected. So we thank you for that. And Father, I just thank you for the teaching that's going to come forth today. I just pray that you prepare all of our hearts to receive what it is that each individual individually what you want us to receive for our lives and we just thank you and we I pray, I pray father that you help us to remember to be grateful for all that we have right now and for who we have right now thank you i praise you in Jesus' name amen it's an honor to be able to be here today with another wonderful testimony of Almighty God and the work that he does in us and through us. And I have here today um, another testimony of God's goodness for us. This is my dear sister in Christ and friend Shannon, and you have an amazing testimony about a work that had actually some things that have plagued you the majority of your life. And I want you to just take a few moments here to share with those that will be watching this the, the work that only God could have done. So I'm just going to kind of bounce in and out, but I'd like for you to just begin your testimony of what was and what now is. Um, my testimony is very much a spiritual healing in comparison to a physical healing, if that makes sense. Um, I struggled my entire life uh, with depression, really severe, severe depression. Um, really up until last year, that's all I knew. I didn't remember a day in my life where I was set free from that. Um, from a very, very young age, as young as I can remember, I always just had this, this vice on my chest. Um, Depression really just kind of crept its way in every single portion of my life. It just kept pouring into every little crevice that I had. What was the youngest that you remember this really being an affliction for you? I know you said young, but... I would say that very easily. I remember being even a 
as young as like eight years old. Wow. Very, very little. Just having this fear and anxiety that just coated me with just this everything was negative mm. wow and um was it like that in your house was it in your family no, no. okay not at all mm. um and it really started taking everybody by surprise honestly because it affected so everybody hmm um, and just wound up kind of trying to deal with it in my own way. I mean, I was born and raised in a church. I was born and raised with the Christian faith, but I never actually actively pursued it, if that makes sense. Sure, sure. Um, but just wound up starting to do some really awful things with my life trying to just make myself feel better in my own way trying to just <laughs> do it all myself sure and um it very much led into um, thoughts of ending my life at a very early age um, the first time i actually tried to overdose on medication was when I was 13. Wow. Um, and I had tried overdosing on home medications multiple times in my life, not even just at that point in time, but um, I well, just, I'm, I'm sure it's also probably set your family in motion with fear. Regarding they you. didn't know. Oh my. And I intended on them not knowing because I didn't want them to intervene. Mm. Um, but yeah, I would just literally just kind of create my own cocktail of this, that, and the other and just figure I'll just take these sleeping medications and I'll just sleep right through it. I would get so mad when I would just wake up the next day. Like, what was the point in that? Mm -hmm. Like, why do I have to sit here and feel like that all the time? And I would just get into these just fits of deep sorrow. <laughs> like, you would just, like, I had just received, like, the worst news of my life. Like, I would wake up like that every day. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, it really um, brought me up until this past year. Like, I lived my entire life, all 32 years of my life <laughs> that way. So, wow. And um, last year, I was laying in bed and I felt it again where it was just that heavy heavy sorrow I was just weeping in the bed and uh, you know we had just started coming here and that was the moment that I actually just I just barely squeaked out the name Jesus and just it was such an insane feeling <laughs> because like it, that, that vice that I had always felt, that tightness in my chest just released in that very moment. And so I started, I was almost in shock. I was just like, I was able to actually breathe. Like it felt like I could actually take a deep breath and it was just, it was so freeing in its own way and I was just, completely just in shock by it. It scared me at first, honestly. <laughs> sure. Well, you'd never known what normal was. No. Or, up, you know, up to the age of eight, yeah. dealing with this. 
So had you pursued the Lord in regarding these matters? Had you, you know, what, what do you believe was the shift that actually brought you, because you said you were brought up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. So had you been pursuing God during that time up until when you started coming here at Faith Center? Before that, what was your path with God regarding your situation? Do you I understand what I mean? Yeah. It was very, very on and off, on and off kind of thing. Um, Did you ever have relief? Not really. Okay. No. Um, it made a big difference. A lot of the churches that we went to didn't really actively involve like the Holy Spirit. Okay. And I feel like the Holy Spirit's intervention in this situation, like that's that was the release for me. So is that here we we teach that. Right. So you had actually come to a place in your walk with God, you knew Jesus, you knew the Father, but you didn't understand the power of the Holy Spirit right. that lived in you. And when you started coming here, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but this is just what I'm sensing, what happened was you gave room, you gave place to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I just submitted. Hmm. Hmm. That's huge. That's a huge key for a lot of people in dealing with um, anything that is traumatic or, you know, f affecting both the mental or the physical body. Yeah. Is submitting. And that's all you have left in that situation. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, because without the Holy Spirit, for me, Christianity really just, like, it felt like, you know, just a good way of life. You know, that's how you lead a good life, is to have that. Even when I was trying to read the Bible, like, I used to watch my mom. She always says that she has coffee with Jesus every morning. She reads her Bible. And I remember just watching her. I was like, how do you just read the Bible mm. like that and she's like well the Bible it literally comes alive he talks to you through his word and I always wanted that and I never understood it I tried myself and I was just like well I'm reading it and it's when you don't have the Holy Spirit within you the Bible becomes just a book but when you get the Holy Spirit that's when all this stuff started flying off the pages for me. Like, half my Bible's highlighted and I have notes written all in it. Yeah. Well, it's become alive to you. Yeah. It is, you actually have life now. Given, because God's word says, my word, it is spirit and it is life. You gave room for spirit yes. in order for his life now to be given to you. Yeah. Wow. And... Uh, that really just kind of hit that release button for me in that very moment because that was the first time that I had actually heard the Holy Spirit actually speak to me. So like not only was I freaking out because I'm like able to actually breathe and I had like such a huge, it was, I literally felt it leave me. Wow. Wow. And that's when I wound up getting the word. So the whole gist of my testimony here comes down to Mark 534, which I just kept feeling that interaction. So now here I am freaking out <laughs> because now I'm just all of a sudden just, it's like, it's almost like an epiphany that's just coming to you all Mark, of a sudden. So Mark 534. Mark 534. And that's when the woman that was sick for 12 years, like, 
literally just reached out and knew if she touched Jesus' mm -hmm. clothes that she would be healed. The woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. And in Mark 5, 34, Jesus turns to her and he says, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Wow. And though her issue was very different than mine. Torment is was, torment. Yes. Regardless. And I was set free. And just so much was just coming to me. And, you know, working where I do, I see people that come in for overdosing all the time. And you work in? In an ER over at Suites. And hmm. these folks, the, the same folks that were doing the same stuff that I was doing, wind up in our ICU they wind up having to go to a higher level of care. If they don't get a new liver within three days, they die. Because of the overdoses that they had just tried to commit suicide with. Yes. And mm. I did not even feel pain. <laughs> I had no symptoms whatsoever. And the Holy Spirit really just laid that on me that God had protected me. Yes. And every little organ in my body yes. protected everything from those overdoses for me. And that was not the end of my story that God had written for me. Amen. Every day a page written. Yes. And <laughs> it's funny because I talk to my husband all the time. I'm just like, it's just... It's so freeing to feel so light. Praise God. All the time. So joyful all the time. And people, my coworkers, my friends, my family, they notice it. Of course. When you've been so walking good. around with a weight that you were carrying that was on you, mm -hmm. that you're no longer having to bear that because Jesus took it from you. Yes, he did. By the power of the Holy Spirit, because you gave place to the Holy Spirit, and you submitted. You know, it's it's the power of the Holy Spirit that does the work. You know, yes, it's the Father. It is him. Of course, you don't separate Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They are one. But it's the, the dunamis power of Almighty God given to us, imparted to us by Holy Spirit, that we have to give place to. Yeah. You know, that's submitting to his work to be able to do what only he can do. And you know, sometimes, Shannon, um, you, you had in your walk, and I don't want to preach, <laughs> but in your walk, in your past, you said you grew up in a Christian home. So you knew about God, you knew about the Bible, you knew about the Word, but you didn't fully have understanding of the application yeah. of what was needed in order for you to have this deliverance and healing take place in your soul because that was that was the part that was really it, yeah your body was reacting to what was going on in the darkness of your soul yeah. and so then the spirit you gave him a place now because you're a three-part being yes and you submitted and you allowed him which then came in and infiltrated your soul, which then became the testimony to your physical, in the physical realm to all of those that know you. Yeah. What a powerful testimony. So tell me, tell me what, I, I, can, I, I can only imagine, because I, at one point in time, I understand depression uh, when I was a teenager, I do understand that. But what, what does that, now look like for you knowing this side of it when you see people who were in the bondage that you once were in as far as you're being able to pray 
in the place that you work at. It's <laughs> we see it all the time because we are the psych hospital here. And uh, I try to share him as much as possible with these people. You're their light, you're the hope. Yes. You're now a hope. Yes, and you really can tell the ones that are very just so desperately reaching. Yeah. Yes. And now I'm able to have their answer. I love it when God kicks Satan in the teeth. Yes. You know, what Satan meant for your harm, God turned it for your good. Yes. For those who are called according to his purpose. Now that calling, you know, what, what became, what was your mess is now your message. Yeah. And it brings a hope and it brings life and it brings a, a place of, of him to be able to be imparted to them. Praise God. So good. He's so good. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Well, Shannon, thank you so much. I am so thankful that you took the time. And I know it took a while for us to get to this point today. <laughs> I'm not going to go there, but we finally <laughs> arrived. We finally got here. But I'm very, very thankful uh, so for your willingness uh, to, to share uh, what only God could do. Yeah. And if he did it for you, he'll do it for all of you. Whether it's mental, whether it's physical, disorders, it, there's nothing impossible for God. He created us. He knows how this works. And I know, I don't have any doubt, that for some of you who are listening to this testimony, there were key points that she said that sparked in you a knowledge of now how for you to receive what God has already done for all of us. Yeah. That's what a testimony does. That's why testimonies are so powerful. You know, yes. because it, it, it just shares his glory and his goodness. And his willingness. So thank you, Shannon, Absolutely. so much. You're such a, you are a bright light. You are a bright light. I, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful yes. to, to have this opportunity to serve with you, because um, God is so awesome. I leave that word for Him. In yes. Home. So thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. God bless you more. God bless you. <laughs> we can go home now yeah <laughs> you know it's so I really do I'm so grateful <coughs> to be able to uh, share testimonies we're gathering our own now um, you know when we started out with healing school um, we were always showing Andrew Womax or other video testimonies and stuff now they're coming all right we will be showing those too but um, we're, we're gathering our own testimonies and here just a few weeks ago, if you all remember Noah, Shannon's son, he was the one that was completely healed of celiac disease. Uh, so they both got healing and deliverance just in the same time frame, really. That whole family has just had life changes because of what only our God can do. So... We do praise him for that. We know who it is. Uh, did everybody get a sheet, a handout? Everybody? All right. Those are the scriptures that we're going to be expounding upon today. You can take those home and you can study those. Um, now, here a couple weeks ago, I had referred to this book called In Him. And we handed these out. Some of you uh, might possibly not have been here or you didn't get one, I do ask that it's one per family. Um, so if you did not get one, could you please raise your hand so that we can make sure that, uh, I got it, Loretta, thank you, honey. So we can make sure, keep your hand up so that you can make sure and get one, okay? And thank you, Faith Center, for buying those for us because that's who I, <laughs> God says you don't get unless you ask. Well, I asked. So <laughs> they blessed us by uh, purchasing that for us. And that's another thing. You know, that's what your offerings help to pay. 
it helps to offset the cost, you know, that um, Bay Center is willing to be able to put into our lives. They're sewing into our healing. You know, they sew into this house. And that's why we get to reap the way that we do in this house uh, because of all the sewing that takes place. So anyways, well, Father, we just thank you for all the testimonies that are coming forward. I look forward, Lord, to being able to do more videos and do more testimonies and hear more about what the great physician is doing in each and every one of our lives. You are constant, Holy Spirit. You never shut off, you never stop. And how thankful we are, Lord, that that revelation, Lord, I pray for greater understanding of that revelation so that when situations and circumstances that might be trying to take the preeminence in our physical bodies, Holy Spirit, rise up. Holy Spirit, rise up this in, in each and every one of us so that the work of the physical body does not prevail against the work of the Holy Spirit that's in us mightily working. Lord, I, I, I just believe today is a day of breakthrough. I believe for days today to be days of, of, of suddenness. Things that people have been hoping for, praying for, believing for. Today. I call today, today, the day of breakthrough. And I say that not just for them, I'm speaking it for myself. Today. Life. Health and wholeness. You are a good father. And Lord, we, your people who are covenant with you, are supposed to be the proof and the evidence of what this life looks like. So Father, I just thank you for what you're going to do. Our hearts are wide open. I declare, Lord, that if there's any seed, new seed that's going to be planted today, that it falls on the fertile ground of our heart. And anything, Lord God, that has already been planted, that watering and feeding be done because of the release of the word coming forth out of this earthen vessel. I yield to you. I want you to have your way. I don't have nothing but you. But God, what I do have, I am more than willing to give. And I thank you, God, that that's your way of doing things. It's an honor to serve you. We worship you. We glorify you. The name Jesus. Amen. Now, last week I had to leave early, but there was um, a question and uh, that was asked. And I, because I get the video, I get the camera. This goes home with me after every class. Tracy alluded to it sometimes. The internet does not like working with me very well, and it takes sometimes 24 hours to upload these videos. But uh, nonetheless, I got it back last Saturday because I had to leave early, and I watched, I watched it. And I know that one of the questions that was asked at the end was regarding about how to answer others regarding what you're believing God to do for you. And it was a person that was in here. Uh, I know it was alluded to, I think, by a couple of different people. Uh, but there was one person that was specific that I heard um, that was referring to family members, specifically their spouse. And I'm just going to tell you what I've learned, okay, in, in answering people. I had the Lord remind me of his word. You don't owe no man anything but to love them. And trust me, I've had many opportunities by people, family members, to be oppositional towards me. And there's a scripture in the Bible that says that it's better to be quiet and appear to be the fool than to open your mouth and prove it. 
I do use that a lot too. And I will look at that person in love because they don't know. They don't understand. They don't understand what it is that I'm believing my God to do. And they become contrary sometimes. They become oppositional sometimes. They, they try to steal. And yeah, Christians. Christians. They try to steal the work that's going on in me. And I won't let them. I guard my heart with all diligence. Because I know out of my heart comes every issue of my life. Now, I love that person, but I just choose to be quiet, smile at them, sometimes go hug them, but I walk away. I just walk away. I leave them. I won't play the game. God showed me years ago, Pam, a tennis match. And what Satan will do, you've got two different parties on a court, okay, a tennis court. And Satan will drop the ball on one side of these, this interaction that I was having with somebody and they hit it into my side. Well, then it was up to me what I was going to do with that ball. Now, I could have either hit it back and tried to explain and tried to help them to understand what it is that I'm standing and believing God for. And the whole time, the enemy's going, That's what I saw until I laid the racket down. Mm -hmm. And so what the ball hit into my court? I let it lay there and I laid the racket down and I don't care. They're not trying to fight for what I'm fighting for. They're not trying to get what I'm trying to get. I love them in spite of them, just like the Lord does me. So I hope that helps to give an answer to how to respond to somebody else. Because trust me, I've had many opportunities, both in the workplaces that I've been at. <laughs> Rebecca knows that. She was there. And uh, my home and my family. I love them in spite of them. So now, moving on. Today's uh, message is called Choosing Life and the Blessing Over Death and Its Curse. In Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20, and you have those scriptures uh, on that sheet, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live. Now hear that. That's generational. That's generational blessing. So that your words will then bless your ongoing legacy, your family, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. It's ongoing. Loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him, for he is your life. He is your life and my life and length of days how many want some length of days some good length of days yeah. health fullness prosperity blessing choose it agree with it make covenant with it you already have a covenant with christ this is the blessing that god gave to us through his son so that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. God is a covenant God. He's a covenant-making God. And if you go into Hebrews, it talks in there about Abraham being your father. Physically. Because God originally made the covenant with Abraham. And did I not just say legacy? So that you and your children and your children's children and your, your grandchildren and great-grandchildren, guess who is your guess who is your great, 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 granddaddy, grandpappy, however you want to say it? Abraham. That's the truth. That was your natural covenant keeping grandperson. <laughs> Centuries ago. You've got to renew your mind to these.
these truths. You've been redeemed. You have a new father. Almighty God is your father, spiritually. But our natural covenant father, Abraham, his blessings. Go, go read about it. You want to know what you had? Go find out what Abraham had. That belongs to you. That belongs to me. I'm not wasting nothing. I figure if it's out there for my taking by faith, I'm going to take it. Because I'm going to bless. My blessing by God is for me to be a blessing to somebody else. I am blessed to be a blessing. There's enough people out there that are cursed that are cursing. Because that's all they know. I choose life. I choose the blessing. I choose to speak the blessing. All right. Yeah, it's Old Testament, what I just read in Deuteronomy 30. But this promise of life and death still holds to our day. As we're new covenant with God through Christ and the New Testament. Do you realize that the word testament means covenant? Old covenant, new covenant. Old testament, new testament. It's the new covenant that God has made with us through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's now who we are in agreement with. Life, blessing. It's what we get to now choose. But that's up to you. Because God does not force his will on anybody. You know, you're born into this world by default under that curse until you realize, oh, I get to choose life. I don't have to live by the world system anymore. I now get to live by the word system. God desires for the blessing of Abraham to continue through us by being in covenant with him through Jesus. So that, just what I just read, so that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers. So you can dwell in the land, holding fast to him, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, for he is your life and length of days. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When this truth came to me, because I was always, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do, I got to do. Look, I'm not a human doing, I'm a human being. And now I get to live by faith. All right? And so when I would see that these promises were meant for me, and God is one time and always, he's, he's the God of eternity, and this is who my father is. And this is now who, how I get to live my life in this blessing in the land that I now live in. As I said, you got translated. You got translated. That's what the word of God says. You were taken out of darkness and you were brought into the kingdom. This is the life that you get to now choose from. I would hear things like, you know, oh, the kingdom of God, you know, it's, it's within you. You have access to everything. How? By faith. And I, I taught two weeks ago. It's not even our faith. It was imparted to us. So now it's just simply believing, not doing, not I got to do, I got to do, I got to do. I mean, and I'm going to explain some of this in this message. In James 4, 7, and Shannon, you know, God tells me, um, I, I, see, I seek him out because I facilitate what we're going to see unless somebody sends me something that the Lord's telling them to, to share with me that we need to hear today in healing school. I submit myself to God. I do that every day. As soon as I wake up in the morning, I submit my body. I, I tell my body, you've got to obey the word of the Lord. I submit my life. I submit my day. I submit my family. I submit my home. I submit every moment of my life to the Lord every day. First thing, when I get up in the morning, I submit. I wave the flag. <laughs> I can't do this, but I know the one who can, and he's alive and well in me, and that's who I'm submitting to. So 
when the Lord put, because I was going to show another video, and the Lord put Shannon's video on my heart to share. And I had, I had watched it. That was done back this past summer, several months ago, like I think in August, when I recorded that video. And so I knew she had been delivered from oppression and depression. I, I mean, I knew her testimony, but I had forgotten completely about the portion of where she said about submission. And that's what I'm showing and sharing with you today. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Our covenant now requires this of us. Submission. It means give yourself to God. It doesn't mean that you have to be doing anything. I just am his child. I submit my life. I submit my body. This body, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, has to obey the word of the Lord. Because I'm submitted to his lordship. I am filled with him. I am filled with his Holy Spirit. This body has to obey the Spirit. The giver of life. I don't let this body, I don't, Pastor Ellen said this last week. I don't ask my body. I don't care. My body doesn't have a choice in the matter. Paul says I buffet my body. That doesn't mean I'm heading to Golden Corral. It means that I, I am harsh with my body. I'm harsh with this body. Because this body tries to rule me. No, you're not. My biggest enemy is my body. It's not the devil. I have the whole teaching. We will do it maybe sometime if the Lord leads me in it. About your body is your taskmaster. It wants to enslave you and tell you. Let's go eat that pound of pound cake. Let's go get that great big pound of M&Ms. Ask me how I know that one. Let's, let's go out and let's go do whatever the lust of the flesh wants to do. Let's go out and just wreak havoc. No. No. Submission. You're giving yourself over to him. You're giving yourself the body. Now, does that mean the body's not going to react? Oh, trust me. It reacts. That's one thing that fasting is so phenomenal for. It's not to move God, it's to get your body out of the way. Fasting is phenomenal. We've been doing this 40-day fast at, at uh, Faith Center. I am in love with daily fasting. I can't believe I just said that. It's on record. I'm not kidding you. I, I am amazed. I am absolutely amazed. Because I would do fasting, but not because I wanted to, but because I felt like I had to. Now I want to. Because I see the results of what's coming out because of my daily fasting. That, you, that's between you and God, okay? I'm just telling you my stuff. Submit. Give yourself to God. To his ways. To his promises. To his blessings. That's what submission means. Wave the flag. I quit. God loves it when we quit. That part. Our part. Trying to make something happen. And we submit to his power. His power is constant. His power, Holy Spirit in us never shuts off. His job, he's co-laborer. He comes alongside, inside, outside. He is constantly working with us. We just got to learn how to submit to it. That's all. That's dying to your flesh. That's crucifying your flesh so that he can live, so that he, so his power can overtake. Previously, we served the God of this world, who is the devil, until we were born again. He was our God, like it or not. I hate that. But man, that revelation. And his whole job was to destroy me. And I was serving him stupidly. Stupidly? Dumb. And dumb. <laughs> I was subjecting myself to him. Because he was in agreement with my flesh. Ah, go ahead. Have that pound of m 
M&M's, go back and go to the store and go pick up another one. Go ahead, don't eat that. That's not, you don't have to eat that. Bless it. Let's bless those Doritos and cheese and Diet Pepsi every day for the next 20 years. Because I like them. This is stupid gone to see. Talking about me. But this was, God, this was Satan. And even serving him when I was born again, doing that. Come on. Don't tell me none of you are like that. Where you just keep doing the same things. Repetition. Because you like them. And you know that they're not good for you. All you got to do is just submit it. It doesn't mean you got to stop it. It just means you got to submit it. It just means I'm laying it down. I'm, I'm done with it. And even in, and as you continue to do that, that temptation, it will leave you. It will leave you. I promise you, the Holy Spirit, all he's waiting for you to do is submit. He wants you to hate what he hates. He wants you to love what he loves. That's the work of the Holy Spirit in every single one of us. And I know some of you don't like what I just said. Your flesh is going... You ain't kidding me. I know what flesh does. Because I remember people saying this from the pulpit, and I was sitting out there where you are. And them saying it in my flesh going. Can't see my lip. All right. Then, the word says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That word may is actually a choice. It means you get to choose. Choose life. And give no place to the, de to the devil. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. The last time that I was teaching in here, I got fact-checked by Marcos. Because I said something <coughs> about the word devil. I thought it was hilarious. I really, I've never been back checked before, not in public. So I thought it was hilarious because what I said was true. Because one of the words for devil is malicious statements. It's a slander. It's words. Now it's now we always think of these little demons. Those are the devils. Yeah, those are there too. Those are spirits. But they're also words because Satan knows the power of our words. He knows the word. And if he can get you to word curse yourself, even in your thought, that's why I said, I am my own worst enemy. Why? Because I had been sowing words and thoughts and, you know, my own self-destruction for decades. My own self-talk. I had been watering and feeding it. Satan may have planted it. But I had been feeding it, so it was producing the fruit of destruction in my life. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Ephesians 4.27 says, neither give place to the devil. What does resist and no place mean? Yes, we have an adversary, but hear me, he's been completely wiped out. Tracy alluded to it. Jesus died. He left his authority. He left that for you and I to now rule and reign over our physical situations, over our health, over our families. That's what the blessing, that's what the blessing is for life and therefore abundantly to the full. So that your cup runs over for other people to get splashed on. Because you have so much. Abundance. No lack. No lack. <coughs> We've been redeemed. So who do we give place to? Almighty God. His word. His covenant promises to us. Submitting your life to God. Focused on the blessing of life and not the curse. Which you're redeemed from. All the past, the current, and the future. 
It's wiped out. Jesus has, he has redeemed us, past, present, and future. As far as the east is from the west, so far are your sins. You're the one that has to agree with that. You're the one that has to renew your mind to that truth. You know, I've done a teaching before about the sin, the curse. And I show it as like an umbrella. And then underneath that umbrella is sickness and disease and poverty and, and unforgiveness and bitterness and hate and jealousy and all the things that are destructive under that umbrella called the curse. Well, guess what? The only person that can move me out from underneath that umbrella is me. No, that's not my life. That's not who I am. No, those aren't my thoughts. No, nope, they don't belong to me. That, that girl's dead. That's Pam, BC, before Christ. Stay focused on the blessings of life, not the curse. Thoughts to prosper you and to give you an expected end. What end are you expecting? What end are you expecting? You know, Pastor Evelyn last week, see, I do listen to the teachers. <clears throat> she was talking about how she saw the last of her life, the ends of her life. She's healthy. She's not decrepit. She sees herself strong, 120. If that's how long God chooses for us to be around, how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself arthritic? Do you see yourself crippled? Look, that's why I say I'm an elder, I'm not elderly. I refuse to be elderly. That's not my portion. Long life, satisfied. I choose. I choose. You don't choose that for me. My husband doesn't choose that for me. I choose that for me. Your ability to see, your perception, how you see something, because you have creative power living on the inside of you. It's called the Holy Spirit. But we're created in his image. This is a whole other teaching. Come back, Pam, focus. Okay. <laughs> But you do have that power to create what you see. And I'm going to show that to you. What we have, let me get back. <clears throat> what end are you expecting? This doesn't mean in the sweet by and by. It says God has plans for us. Jeremiah 29 11. In the Amplified Classic, it says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Plans are plural. That word there is plural. It's ongoing. Many times people think, though, this is at the end of our life. And that we're going to fulfill that plan. Yeah, God's going to see to it. As long as you submit to him. And you walk in obedience to the things that he tells for us to do. He'll see to that. But the ongoing welfare. Welfare. Your well, W-E-L-L. There. Your help. Your plans. The purpose is God. That's why I said we're the salt and the light. We're not supposed to look like a bunch of people sucking lemons. We're, support, we're the blessing. We're the proof and the evidence of God's good and perfect will. That's Romans 12, 2, Pam's translation. This is a confession John and I make. That John and I are the proof and the evidence of God's good and perfect will for us. For we have been transformed by the renewal of our mind by the word of God. We are the proof and the evidence of God's good and perfect will. Go back and read Paul, Romans 12, 2. You'll see why it and that was the Holy Spirit gave me that translation when I was studying that one day. And he just broke it down. I love it when he breaks it down. Plans are the plural, ongoing, never-ending. 
It means walking day by day in his plan, expecting the end from the beginning, and calling those things that are not until they are. That if we're created in his image, this is the way God works, that he calls the end from the beginning. That's why I say I'm healed. Well, it doesn't look like you're healed. Come here, let me hug you. Let me love you in spite of you. And I walk away from you. I don't care what you see. I walk by faith, not by your, by, not by sight. I don't walk by my sight. I don't walk by my feelings. I choose not to walk by my feelings. You know, when I talk to people and I tell you, when you call me, bend over, because I'm going to boot you in the butt. I'm not going to leave you down there seated. I'm going to get you back up where, where I'm not going to leave you down there defeated. I'm going to get you back up where you're seated. You want to know why? Because I have to do this to me all the time. I have to kick Pam in the butt. Because I have an adversary. But he doesn't have me. He does not have me. He has no, no portion in my life. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter what you see and what your judgments are towards it. Your judgments fall to the ground as far as I'm concerned. I walk by faith. And I know that this is how I attain. I know. I stated in the last class that I taught two weeks ago about how we see God is going to shape our life. And how we see ourselves is going to shape our life. He's given us vision. How we see God or know him to be is going to shape our life. I see him as my help. I see him as my provider. I see him as my blesser. I see him as my goodness. I see him as my father. I see him as my deliverer. I see him as my savior. I see him as my teacher. I see him as the very power that's working mightily, constantly in my body. That's how I see God. And I know that's going to form my life because that's how I choose to see him. I don't choose to see him waiting with a lightning bolt ready to strike me down because I screwed up again. Guess what? Those sins are passed away. It's under the blood. Now, if I know that, you know what? If I purposely sin, I need to repent. I can remember, man, when I was first coming to the Lord, that's all I did. It was continual repentance. Well, I had heard you need to live, live a life of repentance. Yeah, but 24 7? <laughs> where, 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 wait, 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 where does salvation come in? Where does my deliverer come in? Where does my Savior come in? He comes in and he covers all those stupid little things that I do think and say. But if I purposely come against you and I am mean to you and I am spiteful for you to you and I do that on purpose, that's what I need to repent from. I'm responsible for that. That's a repentant life. Because I choose. Repentance means just, it also means to change your mind. And not agree with what you once were. How you see yourself is going to shape your life. How do you see you? Do you see yourself blessed and prosperous? Do you see yourself healthy? Do you see yourself decrepit? Change your mind. Change your viewpoint. Sit down and meditate. I am blessed. You're giving place to the Holy Spirit to do a work when you do that. I am healed. You're submitting your, your time. That's a sweet smelling fragrance to the Lord. I'm in health. I run and I do not grow weary. I walk and I do not grow faint. My latter years are greater than my former. I have been restored to the days of my youthful vigor. His strength has been perfected in, perfected in every weakness. 
I let patience have her perfect work in this body. Because it is perfection. As he is, so am I. That's the word. I didn't say anything to you that's not in the word. How much time do you give up? How much time do you meditate? How much time do you die in your flesh? Do you know when you do that, you're actually in a fast? It's a form of fasting. Meditation is a form of fasting. Because you're giving place to the word. You're dying to your flesh. But you're sitting there and you're going, you, you've got to learn how to quiet yourself. Be still and know. That's practice. It is practice. Trust me, I used to, when I first started doing this, I saw every crooked picture on my wall. Suddenly dinner was of utmost of importance to me. I had to go get that meat out of the freezer. <coughs> oh, look at that dust bunny over there. I had to practice spending time with the Lord. And oh, he was so pleased. He was so pleased because I was, I was dying to my flesh in order to spend time with him. That's a sweet smelling fragrance under the Lord. Oh, I feel his presence so strong right now. just waits. That's not for condemnation. But I do pray it convicts you to make sure you spend time with him. <coughs> the reason that all of those scriptures, I asked Tracy to leave these up here because she talks about these all the time. And we were confessing these. The reason all of those scriptures and declarations are out there on that table isn't to be used as a mode of getting what God has promised you to happen. He's already done that. It's to get you to change your mind from dark thinking. From thinking like you once used to into what is now been made available to you. It causes you to see God, your heavenly Father in those scriptures, seeing your Savior, Jesus Christ, your healer, your deliverer, in those scriptures, so that with childlike faith, you simply believe. One of the things that you'll hear me say up here, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. How did that happen? Why did you believe that Christmas was coming? Because you were told over and over. Repetition caused you to believe it. That's what happens when you continually read the Word of God. Repetition brings faith. They're containers of faith. God's scriptures, His promises, they are containers of faith. They are building you up spiritually. Your spirit man is constantly on the move. Your spirit man is constantly growing. And that word is constantly working in your soul. Do you know it's the Holy Spirit's job to transform your soul? But you just got to give him. He's a co-laborer. It's not an automatic. You got to give him something to work with. Meditating on the scripture. That's something to work with. Closing your eyes and, and just thinking about the word. That's giving him something to work with. Seeing yourself healthy. That's giving himself something to work with. Long life satisfied, seeing yourself that way. That's giving him something to work with. Co-labor. And he's going, oh, that is, that's my kid. Look at them. Look what I'm being able to be done, what I'm able to do them, to them. Because they're submitting. They're submitting. You're submitting to him. That's pleasing. That is so pleasing to the Father to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus. That's my kid. That's my kid.
Think about your past. How many times did God answer your prayers? Better yet, the fact that you're even alive when you were doing the stupid stuff and you didn't pray, but God still kept you alive. Those are his blessings. Sometimes if you'll just take the time and journal, write down, I don't care, Tracy said it, the little bitty things. The fact that I can sleep on my side, that's a blessing. It wasn't long ago I could not. But God, the healing power that's taking place in my life. The fact that, that my muscles, because of the chemo and the junk and stupid stuff I did, in the middle of the night, they would just seize. I'd be up for hours and hours praising God, blessing God, walking it out, walking it out, giving place to the Holy Spirit to do. And it doesn't do it anymore. There's so many testimonies I can share that I just don't say nothing. But I know who's doing it. And I give it to him to do. I figure, Satan, if you're going to do this to my body or body, you're going to react. Guess what? You're not going to just sit here and take it. You're going to get up and praise the Lord. You're going to get up and worship him. Take that, Satan, in your smipe and poke it. <laughs> you wake me up with something going on in the body? Here I come, Lord. Let's get, let's get this worship on. Let's get this worship on. I ain't going to waste this night trying to toss and turn and go back to sleep. No, let's get this worship on. And I'm not kidding you. It's not long before it's gone. And I get to go right back to a sweet sleep. Think about how many times he kept you alive. These are minimal examples of God's goodness, his blessings, his love, his protection, his way out of every mess. So that just like Shannon, just like me, you get to get a mess. You get to give a message. What you keep before your eyes and within your mind is what's going to change your life. That's why you're renewing your mind. You're speaking. You're saying this. You're renewing your mind. You're giving the Holy Spirit a place to work. You're giving the Holy Spirit a place to work. You're keeping it before your eyes. I'm going to prove this. Because your mind is your consciousness. It's your awareness. And it feeds into your life source and your physical body. Your eyes, your ears, your thoughts, their gates that you open and close by your choices of what you put before them continually. John did not use, he used to get very frustrated with me when I used to control his remote. Because I would shut off the commercials. Now, he shuts them off. Because he now hears it. He now realizes what they're trying to water and feed. Don't tell me about arthritis. I had enough of that garbage within me already that I believe is uprooted, that I believe has been transplanted with the tree of life. No. Don't go Google searching your symptoms. For God's sake, and I mean that in a holy way, because you just limited God when you do that. And you medical people, I know you don't like that, but that's the truth. You already have enough information in you to destroy you. Do you realize that? If you've been living in this world any longer than 20 years, you already have enough information in you for, for Satan to kill you. If you don't know anything contrary. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by what you keep before your eyes and within your mind. That's what's going to change your life. Your eyes, your ears, your thoughts, their gates that you open close and close by your choices of what you put before them continually. Your mind is your consciousness. It is your awareness. It feeds into your life source. Proverbs 4, 23 says in the English, easy English Bible, be very careful to keep your mind safe. The thoughts you think 
make you the person that you are. Even the world says you are what you think you are. They know that. I remember hearing that before I was born again. Genesis 30, 31 through 41. I didn't, when God gave me this revelation, I was just reading the word, and all of a sudden it came alive to me. Genesis 30, 31 through 41. This is the time when Jacob had been tricked by, he wanted to marry Rachel. Jacob's father-in-law tricked him, set him up with Rachel's sister. What was her name? Leah. Leah. Okay, so now he's making <coughs> Jacob work for him in order for him to get Rachel and his family back. Okay, so he's making all these bargains, but he don't want to let Jacob go. Why? Because of the blessing of Abraham. Jacob was so rich, and anybody that was around him was being made rich because of Abraham's blessing that was on his life. How much is Abraham's blessing blessing you? How much of his blessing is on your life? That's up to you. According to how you believe is what you're going to receive. That's why I said go study Abraham's blessings. That's yours. That's your inheritance through Jesus. So come to verse 31, it says, And the box said, he said, What shall I give you? Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this for me, I will again pasture your flock and keep it. Let me pass through your flock today, removing from it every speckled and spotted sheep and every black lamb and the spotted, spotted and speckled among the goats. They shall be my wages. Now, the reason why he said that is because all the solid colored cattle was very expensive. They were greater in trade and uh, in money value than the spotted and the speckled. It was the pure ones, the ones without all the stripes and spots. Those were, you would get a lesser wage, a lesser amount when you tried to sell that. So Jacob's making this agreement with them. Everything that's spotted and speckled is going to be mine. Everything that's solid, it's going to be yours. So my honesty will answer for me later, verse 33. When you come to look into my wages with you, and he's talking about the cattle, Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the lambs, if found with me, shall be counted stolen. Laban said, good, let it be as you have said. But here goes Laban again. That day, Laban removed the male goats that were striped and spotted and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white on it, and every lamb that was black and put them in charge of his sons. And he set a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob pastured the rest of Laban's flock, which means that all Jacob had was the solid ones. Right? Mm -hmm. Just said, every spotted, every speckled, every striped, three days' journey, we're getting him out of here. So that Laban, oh, Laban was a mean man. He was, I don't want ever to have a father-in-law like that. God Almighty, he was horrid. Greed. Verse 37. So Jacob took fresh sticks. I love this. He took fresh sticks of poplar and almond and plain trees and peeled white streaks in them. Now visualize this. Exposing the white of the sticks. So he's stripping the bark. He set the sticks that he had peeled in front of the flocks in the troughs, that is, the watery places where the flocks came to drink. And since they bred when they came to drink, the flocks bred in front of the sticks, and so the flocks brought forth striped, speckled, and spotted. What was kept before their eyes? They became. What was kept before the cattle's eyes, they became. What are you keeping before your eyes? 
What are you listening to? Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the striped and all the black and the flock of Levon. He put his own droves apart and did not put them with Levon's flock. That means he's kept them separate. Whenever the stronger of the flock were breeding, so all the strong flock that Levon had left behind, Jacob was taking those strong heifers and breeding them and leading and putting the sticks in the troughs before the eyes of the flock so that they would breed among the sticks. Is that powerful or what? That's why the word of God says, keep before your eyes. Joshua 1, 8 through 9. Do not let this book of the law depart from your lips. Recite it day by day and night by night. You know, I used to think, how can I do that? I would sing worship songs. I would, I would settle. I, I, actually, many, 99% of the time, I wake up with a song in my heart. And I just meditate, I worship, and I sing that day with that. Because many times it's all scripture that are in those songs. And that's one way to recite it day and night. So that you may carefully observe all that is written in it. Then you will attain your goal. Then you will succeed. I command you, be strong and steadfast. Do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Observe that you may carefully observe what you're seeing. That's why he said, don't let my word, don't let my scriptures depart from your eyes. Just like the cattle, he kept the striped and spotted before the cattle and they became what they saw. God's word has the power in itself to bring itself to pass if you keep it before your eyes. And you keep it in your heart and you're meditating on it and you're reflecting on it and you're speaking it. It's how you become. That's why I say you're not a human doing, you're a human becoming. Heal, whole, delivered, prosperous, blessed. Holy Spirit is continually doing this work in us. But it's up to you to choose to submit yourself to the Lord. Resist the lies. Resist the devil. And he has to flee. The word in uh, Strong's Concordance in that scripture observe, it means to keep to guard, to keep watch and ward, to protect and to save life. Father, I just declare that this word of truth that was released here today is a blessing. I declare, Lord God, that it fell on good ground and I cover it all with the blood of Christ Jesus. Satan, you're not going to afflict it, you're not going to change it, you are not going to alter it. You're not going to steal it. This word is on good ground. And I declare it produces 30, 60, and 100 fold in every one of our lives, including myself. And I thank you, Father, for it will produce and it will accomplish that which it was sent forth to do. We are the healed. We are the whole. We are the blessed. We are the forgiven. We are the sanctified. Thank you, Father. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Are there any questions? <coughs> I didn't forget. No questions? No comments? I saw you. Pat? Just go to your seat there, and I'll have her bring this around.
have to go this morning. As so how many classes do we need to go to before we go out and heal the sick? You don't have to have many classes to do that. That was already, you were commissioned as soon as you were born again to go lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Do you know how many people I lay hands on and they die? I don't care, I was still told to go lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So I let go of those things that lie behind and I press towards the mark. What is the mark of the high calling? His word says I will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's my commissioning. I've been commissioned to do that. Well, why did they die? That's not my, that's not, I don't care. Yeah, I care, I care that they die, don't get me wrong there. But I don't think upon that, I don't think about that. I still am in obedience to what God told me to do. And I let him do the work. Any other questions or comments? Because it could just be his plan, that's the plan. No, you know what, I don't know that it's his plan. I don't know that, you don't know that. We don't. I don't even, I'm not even gonna make that assumption. I refuse to make that assumption because then I'm saying that that plan, now it could be, but I choose to believe that he said they would recover. Right. Right. He either told me that and I believe that or I don't. So I don't give way to possibly something different because God says, I know the plans that I have for you. They're to prosper you. They're for your welfare. They're for your health. They're for your deliverance. Jesus did not die for us to take on sicknesses and diseases and say, forgive me, not trying to offend, for me to say, well, that must have been God's plan for you to die from cancer. No. That would make my father schizophrenic because he put his son through hell, literally, took upon his body every sickness and disease and infirmity, all of the curse. I was in an open vision one time and I saw Christ on the cross before he died. And I saw the demons, what they were doing to him. But God, I'm redeemed. You're redeemed. When I lay hands on you, you're redeemed. You're healed. Now I find out things later that their faith, they were not appropriating God's word. That's why I said in the past, Pastor Ellen doesn't ask God how come that didn't happen. I do. How come that happened? How come they died? I do want to know. You gave me this ministry, Lord for laying hands on the sick. I need to know why did they die when I did what I was supposed to. Many times it was because of what they didn't do. They were planning their funerals. There was one woman, Pastor Evelyn, when she first started asking me to come alongside and, and go into people's homes. And there was a woman who was in four stage cancer and I'm ministering to her. She's got two daughters that were teenagers, one was gonna graduate that year. She wanted to see her kids graduate and live. She was just in her 50s. And I'm in there and I'm ministering the word of God to her and she's yes, yes, yes. And all the time her husband's in the office in the other room with their life insurance adjuster, making plans for her funeral. That's why I say, I owe no man anything. I'd have gone in there with my Bible and thumped my husband upside the head if that would have been my husband. What are you doing? What are you thinking? You're either going to believe with me that I'm going to live, you know, when I got the diagnosis of cancer, John was like, because the Lord said, take the treatments, do the chemo, no surgery. Fine. Because he said, I'm going to baffle the medical community. When John... And I didn't even tell John. He knew it was lung cancer. I did not tell him this day. His faith was not where mine was. And my husband says, well, I suppose I need to take off work so that I can go take you to these treatments and, and these uh, uh, at the cancer center. I said, no, wait, 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 wait. I said, if I had never gotten this diagnosis, 
what would you be doing? He said, I'd be working. I said, that's exactly what you're going to do. I said, you're going to keep going. You're going to keep doing. I'm going to do this. I know who's with me. And I'm going to come out on the other side of this. I did not need a sympathizer. I did not need anybody holding my hand. I have somebody in this room right now that offered to come with me to my treatments. No. No. God's got this. And I'm not kidding you. The people that I would go in there and I'd have to change my clothes. And I would have to put on these gowns to go in to have the treatments. There were people all in those blocks where our clothes would go, where the gowns were. And I was laying hands on every single one of those clothes. Calling them healed, calling them whole. I seen one woman two years later who I got to minister to in the waiting room. Her name was Thelma. It was my mom's name. And I saw her two years later when we were going to vote. She was completely healed. Yes. And this woman was in fear. But I got to, I got to, I got to share life. I got to share the word. <coughs> That's our God. Do you have a question, Lori? Yeah. Okay, Pat. I, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get you out of here. Hang on. Yeah, I was just wondering if you could give me some advice. On, um, like, I was talking to Tracy earlier. Like, when you walk through that journey of healing of cancer or whatever you're going through, it's like everything's good. Like, you're doing, like, everything's great, and then boom. And then <coughs> good, and then boom. And, like, why does that, why does that keep happening? You know, okay. That's just driving me crazy. No, well, don't let it drive you crazy. You drive it. You don't let it steer you. You steer it. That's why I talk about Lori when I say, and I just said it, bend over when you call me because I'm not going to leave you down there defeated. I'm going to get you back up where you're seated. Paul said, build yourself up in your most holy faith by speaking in tongues. The first person that I'm booting in the butt is me because I refuse to allow myself to be defeated. He's under my feet, not me under his. So when it goes up and down, goes up and down, I choose to raise the praise. I choose to raise the praise. I exalt him. I magnify the word. I don't allow the symptoms and the, and the junk that's in this body to tell me what it's going to do. I submitted you, body, this morning to the Lord. I submitted all the junk that's going on in you, body, to the Lord. You don't rule me. I now, by the Spirit, rule you. You're subject to the Word. Right. And I take the authority over you, body. I don't care what hits me. Because I'm going to hit it back. Because I have all the weapons that I need <coughs> to destroy that giant that's trying to take me down. He's the one that's going to die, not me. Now, I want you to know I really do love people. Okay? I do. I just hate the devil. I hate what he's done to the church. I hate that we sit in this place and we look like the world. It's not what God purposed. Not when he paid such a great price. Pat, there's a question over here. That help you? That and get rid of all that medical equipment out of your house. Yeah. I told you what to do. This is more of a, uh, is this thing on? It's on. Okay. Talk loud. Uh, okay. Um, it's with, uh, you said Pastor Pam, and, you know, when he, all the commercials and stuff like that. And when I went through my bout with cancer, and you saying going up and down, up and down. Okay, when I went in the hospital, um, it seems like already it's, Satan's got things rolling because they give you this big, huge manual. They want you to read it. They want you to tell you what the cancer is. And then I refused. Good. Okay. Amen. And I started listening to uh, Christian music. And I started. I watched my own. I brought my own DVDs in, and then that. And then the minister would come in from the hospital and come try to cheer me up. And you, 
And I came back at him with scripture and stuff, and he said, well, you know, you got this under control, I'm out of here. And he walked out. Now, when I went to the cancer clinic and where they were giving me the medicine, I was supposed to get two bags. And the Lord said, no, it's not happening. Because there's one bag, and I was supposed to just get this medicine, and it's supposed to, it takes a really long time to get into you. Now, when you're in the hospital, because it's open 24-7, they had time to put it in you. But at the clinics, they can't. Now, I was sitting waiting, um, and I'm watching people, and they're paying their bills, and it's like they're at a Walmart, lined up, like it's free sale. Is that many people have cancer? And I'm saying to, to I'm, I'm always talking to the Lord. My thoughts are on the Lord 24-7. I'm thinking about it. And I say, Father, why? What is going on? And he goes, see how the devil, he's just deceiving people. They, by my stripes, you are healed. These people, they don't, they don't listen. They don't believe. They, they, they just... They submit. They submit to it. They don't acknowledge me. And this is why. And I, and I, and I said, yeah. And so they put me in, and they tried to put that bag in me, and my body went into convulsions. And they said, we, finally, my doctor said, we can't give them that bag. We'll give them one bag. And I, fine with me, fine with me. And, and finally, I said, I'm done. <coughs> Lord said, you're done to me. Mm -hmm. So I told the doctor, I'm done. Now my wife, Bless her heart. She doesn't. Sometimes she doesn't understand. Now I have my port in my right here, and it has to come out. But I don't have the money for it and stuff like that. And don't worry about it. But it's always there. But it's telling me that my father is always there to yeah. help me get through it. So it reminds me. But she sometimes will say to me, and I bless her heart. And I know she's not trying to hurt me anything, it's just a thought. And she'll say, how do you know you're healed? You didn't go back to get reaffirmed. And I said, I know. There you go. And I hold to that. That's right. You know, and I'll say this, um, the doctors, when they said it was gone, the one that was not a very nice doctor to me, he went on a witch hunt afterwards. He wanted full scans on my body after that. He wanted me to take more treatments. I had to sign against medical advisory, a sheet of advice. I had to sign a sheet saying, no, I'm not taking any more. Because I knew it was done. Why am I gonna put poison in this body when something's already been killed? It's already been destroyed. I'm not gonna put more poison in. Because that's what the Lord led me to do. So, Vicki? I think I've mentioned this before, but I have a kidney doctor that I was walking out of one of our sessions, and he literally said, this isn't going to heal you. You're going to be healed from, because of him and because of your faith. Amen. <laughs> and I said, you know what, I'm so blessed to have a doctor like that. Yes. Because, and he's an Indian, which, you know, I know that they're Christian, but I am so blessed that he stands beside me yeah. and, like you said, holds you up a little bit, picks me in my butt a little bit. And, yeah. But it's, it's those that you if you're <coughs> to find when you're going through this, just like this group, that makes the difference yeah. on your thinking and keeping your mind straight. Because the world, world the natural world, pulls you in. It tries. It tries really hard, and you have to fight it every day, every you afternoon. Do. And I do agree. I know I said this to you in the bathroom, but this past week I was blessed by two phone calls, one from our pastor here that she was thinking about me, which I thought was marvelous. I was just sitting in the car listening to Christian music, and I was reading the Bible because I was doing a night shift, and a patient's visitor walked past me 
and said, I think you need to be prayed on for something. What can I pray for you on? And I thought, what a beautiful day I had. Mm -hmm. That that there is someone that felt that. Now they might have seen me reading the Bible and got, you know, she's may need whatever, you know. But I just was so pushed that up to worship and praise that you have those days, those are the strength days. There you go. Those are the days. There you go. Those are the, those are the days you want. And the more that you are out there with the Bible, you attract. There is a law. I'm not going to teach you're it right now. It. There's gonna... called a law of magnetism. Yep. And, and, and I've seen it's, more, it's of ever that, working. more of that. And one more treatment for me. Ed's done. And it's done. We agree. We agree, Father. I thank you for the healing power that's worked mightily for Vicki. And we thank you that the testimony, her test, has become her testimony. We exalt you, Lord. Well, Father, I bless all of them again. I bless you all. Have a wonderful day. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the basket. You're blessed in the store. The blessings are overtaking you. Quit trying to outrun them. Love y'all. Pastors, come on. Or ministers, come on up. Jacob, let's get some worship on.